All right, Dragon Gate USA, finally a DG USA video. As a lot of you guys know, Dragon Gate USA has had a really tough time this year, especially on YouTube. Just not a lot of people talking about their shows. Uh, nobody's ordering them. Chikara and PWG has uh, surpassed them uh, without a doubt. And um, But I, I do like the company, though. I, obviously, I'm a big fan of Gabe Sapolsky. I'm not one of the people on here that are uh, extremely negative about him and think that he's like the fucking devil. Like some people make him out to be, but um, I, I, I don't know. It, it all depends on whether you, how you feel about these Evolve guys. Obviously, a lot of people are huge fans of Dragon Gate in Japan. Some people would even say promotion of the year. You know, the thing with me, I just haven't seen a lot of the Infinities. I just don't keep up with the company as much as some other people. But yeah, Dragon Gate in Japan is amazing from what I've seen. But, you know, it's become more, DG USA has become more of a mix of Evolve and Dragon Gate. So it all depends on whether you like the Evolve guys, but I love them. I, I definitely think these are, you know, the hottest indie guys right now. And to say that the indies just don't have as much talent as they used to, I think that's kind of a load of shit because I think this, pro I mean, these companies prove PWG, Chikar, DG USA, the talent's definitely still there. And uh, I would just say this, like, let me just give you guys a question. Would you make this trade from Ring of Honor? You have Michael Elgin, Tomasa Champa, Mike Bennett. Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. Would you trade those five guys for Chuck Taylor, Johnny Gargano, Ricochet, A.R. Fox, and Sammy Callahan? I will pull off that trade in a second. That's just me. I, I would definitely trade those guys to uh, Evolve if I could, if I was a Ring of Honor representative. So, um, so let's just get right down to it. This Enter the Dragon 2011 show, in my opinion, this is one of the most underrated shows of the year. Uh, happened back in June. The DVD is finally out. Kind of went under the radar, but I do want to talk about it. But before I get to that, the most important part of this video, we have an IPPV coming up on Friday. It's uh, from Los Angeles, part of Wrestle Reunion Weekend, Dragon Gate USA. It's called Open the Golden Gate. Uh, so uh, definitely the card looks stacked. If everything goes right, this could be the best Dragon Gate USA pay-per-view in years. So in about two years, actually. So Definitely give it a chance from WWNlive.com. I'll talk more about that later, but definitely want to uh, quickly review this show from BB Kings. Like I said, it took place back in June. I'm not going to give you a full in-depth thorough review. Obviously, a lot of you guys probably don't want to sit through a really in-depth review for something that's so old. But uh, definitely check it out, man. Let's just get right down to it. We have Masato Yoshino versus Ricochet to start off the show. Just a hell of an opener. Obviously, this is arguably the two best athletes in professional wrestling going at it. Don't expect anything overkill. I'll give it about three and a quarter. You know, just pretty good stuff from both guys. Let me say this about Yoshino. Probably my favorite athlete to watch in professional wrestling. And the, the guy is about 31, 32 years old. So he's not really young anymore. But you see, his body really hasn't changed since his early 20s. And that just goes to show you that if you just like you just keep in shape and you just keep doing what you're doing every single day and don't change your eating habits, you can maintain the conditioning. I, it just proves to you that age doesn't mean shit. You really can't use age in, as an excuse for you know poor conditioning, which a lot of people do. So just wanted to say that. Next up, we had A.R. Fox versus Picky Sanchez. A.R. Fox is a hell of a high flyer. You know, he's a hell of an athlete. You know, he's kind of like Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet and A.R. Fox, I think they could have a. a a best of seven series. I, th I think that would be a lot of fun, actually, if, if they have the chance to do it. But, yeah, Pinky Sanchez from Chikara, from the BDK. He has, I don't know, if Chikara hasn't been bringing him in that much, uh, along with, um, what's his name, Lince Dorado, who I believe got fired from Chikara. But, yeah, this is more of a comedy match. Pinky pulled his pants down. It was it was a mixed bag. To the end of the match, we've got a lot of great athleticism here. I think Pinky Sanchez is, is a, a pretty decent worker, but A.R. Fox Oh, uh, man, he, he looked great here. This is a nice, you know, solid three-star match, in my opinion. Next up, we had a great fray featuring a lot of great gel gentlemen that are uh, trying to make a name for themselves. Just a lot of great talent here that, that was really hungry and really shined. We had uh, John Davis from the Dark City Fight Club, Tony Ness, Atu, uh, Flip Kendrick, Luis London, Bacade, Sugar Dunkerton, Caleb Conley, Cedric Alexander. John Davis from the Dark City Fight Club's had a great year. Th th this match just proves it. He might be one of the most improved wrestlers of the year. He just looked awesome here. Tony Ness looked really, really good. Uh, who else? Flip Kendrick looked awesome here. I mean, that's pretty much about it. But uh, definitely check out this match, man. It was uh, you get all these hungry guys just going at it and you know trying to make a name for themselves. It was a beautiful thing. 
Next up, we have Sammy Callahan and Eric Cannon, the dirty, ugly fucks, taking on Masaki Mochizuki and um, Susumu Yokosuka. This is great stuff, man. It was very, very stiff. Mochizuki is extremely stiff, and Yokosuka and uh, Sammy Callahan, just great chemistry there. Uh, just a nice, solid, hard-hitting tag match. Everyone needs to go see this. Now, let me tell you some, this about Sammy Callahan and Eric Cannon. I don't like these guys as a team. I Hopefully, this uh, dirty, ugly, fuck DUF gimmick came to an end. A lot of people were really turned off by it. Uh, Callahan's so good, I don't think he needs the part. And to me, Eric Cannon is a much better fit for Chikara than Dragon Gate USA. That's just how I feel about him. But I'm not sure if this tag team officially came to an end. I really can't even tell you. Uh, next up, we have an elimination match. We have uh, Ronin of uh, Johnny Gargano, Rich Swan, and Masada Yoshino. Masada Yoshino actually filling in for uh, Chuck Taylor. I'm not sure where Chucky e. T was because Chikara didn't have a show that night. I don't know what he was doing. But uh, pretty funny segment with Gargano saying, man, Goldberg would come in handy right now. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But Yoshino replaced uh, Chucky e. T. And they took on the uh, Blood Warriors of uh, Shima, Brody Lee, and Austin Aries. I remember Aries tried to cut a promo before this match, and he just couldn't do it. And he just he even admitted, like, I sometimes I just hate cutting promos because his heart just wasn't in it for this match. But whatever. But, uh, you yeah, know, just great action. Yoshino and uh, Shima had a lot of great chemistry here before Yoshino got eliminated. But it came down to Austin Aries and Johnny Gargano. Like I said, it's an elimination match, Survivor Series style. Definitely loved it. Johnny Gargano got a big win over Aries. They just, uh, just, just, just really, really good stuff here. You know, I would say, I know, I said Eddie Edwards is the most improved wrestler of the year, but you got to put a guy like Johnny Gargano definitely into contention for most improved wrestler of the year as well. And next up, we had the main event. We had Yamato, the Open the Freedom Gate champion, taking on Pac, the man that gravity forgot. This was a great match. I really, really loved it. You know, Pac has improved a lot. He used to be kind of like a, uh, a botch. People used to say he used to botch everything back in 2007. The guy's really incorporated a lot. He put on a lot more size. He's a better technical wrestler now. Him and Yamato had a really, really awesome stuff. Just just really just really cool stuff here. My favorite part of the match was Yamato had a headlock on him, and Pac just jumped up to the top rope and just fell back onto him. I don't know. It just came off really, really slick. It sounds kind of stupid, but it came off much better than I described it. And uh, Pac pulled out a lot of high-flying maneuvers. Uh, a lot of great near falls, German suplexes, just just really really sweet stuff. It's it's definitely a four star match. It's definitely it was definitely great. Uh, overall, everything on the show was at least three stars. So I'll, I'll definitely say that. And you had a really really sweet double main event, both back to back four star matches. So definitely don't sleep on the show. This entered the Dragon 2011. Uh, definitely a show that I would uh, definitely recommend. I give you about maybe an 8.25, 8.5. And let me just say this about Yamato. Uh, Yamato had a um, a, pr a pretty good title reign, I would say, but you know, a little bit better than BB Hope. But still, these main event world title matches, a lot of them have been pretty good to great. It's just, they just don't, just nobody talks about them. Like, they, they've they never had that, you know, I, I guess because Dragon Gate's more, it's more tag team oriented. People watch Dragon Gate because of, you know, the six man tags. But seriously, these, um, but, you know, in, in Dragon Game Japan, they they do they have had, you know, the great, you know, one-on-one -on -one singles matches like BB Hulk and Shingo. So, I don't know. I, I just think in the in the future, Dragon Gate needs to do a better job of, uh, you know, I, I just think they need to put on maybe a couple better, a couple like, you know, just one-on-one -on -one open the Freedom Gate title matches that just get people talking because none of these title defenses have got people to say anything. You know, Yamato versus Pac was a great match, but nobody's talked about it. No one's, I mean, the match, it's a great match. It's definitely a match of the year candidate. It's a four-star match. But you haven't heard a word about it. So that's kind of unfortunate. But hopefully Dragon Gate USA could step up their game and just put on better main events. All right, so let me talk about this show. We have Dragon Gate USA's Open the Golden Gate, January 27, 2012, on the West Coast, WWNlive.com, part of Wrestle Reunion Weekend. Uh, this is going to be an awesome show. It looks great. Now, let me say this. The la I've only ordered two Dragon Gate USA internet pay-per-views, and both times I've been severely depressed while I've been watching them. But they just, I don't know, they, they've been good shows. They just, I don't know what it was about them. They just kind of dragged big time, especially that uh, Bushido Code of the Warrior pay-per-view. But, yeah, make no mistake about it. Look at this card. It looks stacked. Look in the description. Every single match looks pretty much good to amazing. Um... Let's talk about it. We have Chuck Taylor and Rich Swan of Ronin taking on the Young Bucks. It looks okay. You know, I'm not that crazy about Rich Swan. 
lot of people think his uh, combat skills are kind of questionable. Johnny Gargano's hurt right now, so that's unfortunate. So he won't be defending the Open the uh, Freedom Gate Championship. So that kind of sucks. Uh, Loki's actually coming in. We have Loki who made his return at Evolve 10. He's taking on BB Hulk. Uh, I don't know. You know, Loki. I'm not going to say he's disappointed me over the last couple of matches that he's had, but you just can't go into his matches with a lot of expectations. You can't expect anything like a Loki versus Kenta type of match. That's just not going to happen. But you know, Key and BB Hulk. Um, I think it's an interesting combination. AR Fox versus Sammy Callahan, anything goes match. These two guys are definitely on the verge of breaking out. They're hot right now. You got two young up 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 and comers that are gonna put their bodies on the line, just give it hundred percent. That should be great. We have Masato Yoshino versus Naruki Doi in a grudge match. Naruki Doi and Masato Yoshino used to be tag team uh, champions, tag team partners. I believe the rookie Doi turned on Yoshino and sided with the Blood Warriors. They had a, a great match at Dragon Gate's final gate pay-per-view from uh, 2010 in the main event. So you know what to expect from these two guys. These two guys are pretty much known to put on amazing matches. You know, if they get time, this could be something amazing. So I would say low-key BB Hulk, Masada Yoshino, and Naruki Doi in this next match, Pac versus Akira Tozawa, these three matches... There's no reason why these three matches shouldn't hit the four-star level. So Pac and Akira Tozawa, a rematch from WrestleMania weekend. I would say they probably stole the show as far as crowd reaction goes back at uh, Mercury Rising. So now we're getting a rematch. I, I'm not crazy about seeing these two guys again. You know, I would like to see Tozawa maybe face somebody else, maybe Naruki Doyer, or someone that he hasn't fought before. Uh, I, I just think with the Indies, particularly in Ring of Honor, We've seen so many rematches that has been such a turnoff with Roderick, Eddie, and Davey. I just hope DG USA isn't falling into that same territory. But uh, Akira Tozawa, man, uh, I, I just can't wait to see him wrestle again. He's definitely probably my favorite, probably my favorite wrestler right now overall on the Indies. Next we have Sima and Ricochet uh, taking on Masaki Mochizuki and Susumu Yokosuka, Jimmy Susumu. That's what he's calling himself now. I mean, this should be good. I'm not crazy about Ricochet. You should expect a lot of crazy spots here. Uh, Mochizuki and, and Yokosuka, they're not your typical Dragon Gate guys. They're not really that high flying. They're more stiff. They're more technical. So this should be a nice change of pace. And, uh, you know, I, you, once again, from SEMA, you can't expect much from SEMA matches. You know, they're usually good, but just not amazing. Uh, but this is a tag team match, so it's kind of a different situation here. But, uh, yeah, overall, this show looks good. Open the Golden Gate, California. You know, I, I don't know why, but California is always associated with gold and yellow. I guess it's because of the uh, gold rush from uh, years and years ago. So that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Order this show from www.live.com. It looks like it's going to be something special. So don't sleep on it. Just wanted to give it some attention. And uh, all right, take it easy.